I'd like to invite all of you at this time to just kind of quiet your minds, quiet your hearts, close your eyes if you need to, to enjoy a little bit of meditative music as we invite God to join us in our Sabbath service today. Sabbath. Our call to worship is found on Psalms 65, verse 1 to 10. Praise awaits you, our God, in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. You who answer prayer, to you all people will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those who choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds, God our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and the farthest seas, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with the awe of your wonders, where morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. You care for the land and water it, you enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain, for so you have ordained it. You drain, redress its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless it with crops. I invite you to stand with us as we sing our opening hymn, Open My Eyes That I May See.
able at this time to kneel. As we come to God in prayer, we'll be singing My Jesus, I Love Thee, just the first stanza. Because we believe in you, we have come here knowing that all that we have done this week to try and take care of ourselves looks so small when we compare how you take care of us. So we come into this place to thank you and to praise you. In the name of Jesus, Father, we come and we, we thank you for all that you have done for us this week. Lord, there are so many that are ill and are needing special attention on your part, but we know that because of how you have cared for us this week, you are also caring for them and their needs. And Lord, the prayers that we have prayed for them, we know that they have been answered, and so we thank you and we praise you. Lord, too, there are many things going on in our nation and in our city. Uh, there are people who are homeless. There are people whose marriages are breaking up. There are people who don't know where their next paycheck is coming. Lord God, we, we thank you that you came for them as well and that you would ask us to be involved in your ministry and that you would ask us to go in your name this week. We have been grateful to be a part of your ministry. Lord, we ask too that, that as we meet and greet our friends, that they will know that we are Christians because of the way that we treat them and the way that we ask them, too, to be a part of your ministry. Lord, please forgive us where, like the song says, the, the follies of sin have enticed us once again. We ask for your forgiveness, God, because those moments where we have not trusted you to give us what we need, our daily bread, we are, we are truly sorry. We ask that you would strengthen our resolve, that you would move us closer to you so that as you are moving throughout this town, that we would hear your voice and we would do what you ask. This is our prayer today and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. like to invite the deacons and deaconesses to come forward as I just remind you for a second if you notice in the bulletin our church offering this morning is going to be designated for the church budget here in the Santa Clarita Seventh Amish Church we're blessed to support many different ministries and many of those ministries are um, supported by the church budget. And so if you will prayerfully consider that as you prepare your offering this morning and as you return your tithes to the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to be here today to worship you, to lift your name in praise. We ask you now to put a special blessing on the offering that will be received, that you will use it in a way that is pleasing in your sight, that 
that it will multiply and that many people will be blessed by this monetary offering. And we thank you for the opportunity to return our tithes to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As the offering is being presented, we will be singing hymn number 309, I Surrender All. Sing with me. Actually, I'm also going to invite uh, Jordan to come on up at this time so we can have a nice transition. These people and I, uh, other than Jordan, who's in the next part, we went to a breakfast this morning. Mm. There was donuts and coffee and let's see what else. Fruit. Fruit. I had a banana. Bananas. Just apples. wanting to say I had a banana and a donut and coffee. Okay, so I had breakfast. We had breakfast at a facility, what was it called? Something oh, Academy? Global, Global Prep Academy. Global Prep Academy. Some of you may know more about this than I do. It's a really cool place. And they are partnering with... Family Promise of Santa Clarita. Family Promise. You've heard a little bit more uh, about it this morning. Beginning tomorrow night, we will have two families totaling about 12 people who will be staying in our facility. 
This is a really great organization that we are very happy to be part of and the questions or the requests that you've heard uh, for people to help uh, just want you to know that it's like going to supper with someone. Okay, Please understand that that is how it feels when you come here somebody else might be pre preparing the supper and you get to sit around a table and have a family meal with Scott. individuals. Scott, 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 thank you. Scott. Marty and Winnie. How, how many of you like Scott's food? Okay, see, many, and if you don't know who Scott is, uh, then I, I, I tell you, when, when's he Mark, cooking? When's he's he cooking? He's cooking Tuesday and Saturday night. All right. Do I have anyone who would like a fantastic Italian dinner by, cooked by Scott Scotto, a real Italian from New Jersey, okay, who makes his own pasta sauce? Okay, if you want a dinner like that, just come on Tuesday night and be a part of the family that is embracing individuals, individual families, uh, often single parent families who have lost their place to live. Okay, so Family Promise provides an opportunity for us as churches to, you know, they talk about cash flow, you cash flow your house. I'm talking about people flowing this facility. Amen. Every time we use this facility more, it has more of a reason to exist. Amen? Amen. Okay, why should this place sit empty during the week? Okay, and that we pay church budget that we all call for. We call, please help us keep the lights on. Why? <laughs> well, this is one of the reasons why, okay, is that there will be in this facility, there will be two families that will be living here, and we will be housing and feeding them. Um, I want to thank these individuals. Uh, is, is there anything else you need besides uh, money, food, and some time in these people's lives? Prayer. Okay. Prayer. We heard again this morning, we don't know exactly uh, whether or not this is just a round figure, but I, I, I wanted to tug on your heartstrings, so I'm going to tell you. In Santa Clarita right now, the school system reports 700, I didn't say seven, I said 700 kids who are living in a precarious situation where they might be in a car, a garage, or some other couch surfing situation. How do the schools know this? Because they come to school in the same clothes every day. And because those clothes don't get washed. So when you did laundry this week, just understand that that's because you had a washing machine and because you had soap and because you had a house. Think of what it must be to not have those things and still try to survive and have your kids stay in school because you know if they come out of school they're going to get behind and if they get behind then it's going to be worse, etc, etc, etc. So Family Promise comes in and says, no, we will provide you the basics of what it means to survive in our society today and we will help to spin you back up into society, housing, job, right? What else? Okay, so I don't know. I got inspired this morning and um, I've offered my services to be on the board of Family Promise, Amen. representing you and representing the fact that now three more churches in the Santa Clarita Valley have said yes again Amen. to being used. Amen. Okay, so that's the good news. The other good news is a couple of those, real life and also the, the LDS church in the whole of the Santa Clarita Valley has come on board to be volunteers. Real life, 6,000 people. Uh, uh, the LDS Church, 7,000 people. This is a, these are huge church organizations that are saying, if you have the place, we have the people. So I just want you to know, we may look small, but we're already deeply involved in a program that is so helpful to the families that, 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 that get the help. Unfortunately, they only have 14 spots right now. They would like to do more. Remember I said 700 school children? So, you know, if you, if you feel like I do that 
this is the sort of thing that Jesus calls us to do for the least of these. Okay? That they're not just down on Skid Row in LA. They're right in this community. Okay? They hide. They hide really well. They try to try not to tell you what's going on in their life. But if we can help them quietly to continue with the life that they need and, and, and would like in, in our place, I believe, I believe that we will have a stronger society. That we will have a stride and we will have played a role in doing that. So the insert in your bulletin today that you've seen actually for the last three or four weeks, I believe it's green in color today. Um, one side is what our, our needs are for Sunday tomorrow through next Sunday. Um, but the flip side of that, that um, insert explains really pretty much day by day how the Family Promise program works. We are just one of right now, I think, eight or nine congregations. As Pastor Mike said, there are other congregations that are coming aboard. We actually host these families. When we first got started, the plan was once every 12 or 13 weeks. And over the five years, it's kind of dwindled down where we're actually hosting maybe every 10 weeks right now, which because we've had congregations that have stepped away, sometimes because we only have eight congregations that have agreed to host, these families are staying in a 1,200 square foot home that is actually the resource center, um, and it's pretty crowded when we're looking at 12 people, three adults, several teenage children, a two-year-old, and so on. So um, if you have friends that attend other congregations that may have facility to agree to host families, that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, we so appreciate, over the years, your commitment as a church family to help us staff when we do have um, the families here in the congregation. But as Pastor Mike says, um, we can do more. And... You know, we want to do more. We're committed to do more. So, um, and, and the staff at the resource center does help with case management, Correct. does help them to find, today. yeah, find, um, new housing opportunities, helps them with resumes, helps them with their budget. And, um, and that's the whole goal. Of family promise, and that's what makes it unique in that it's families. Trevor, you you got excited about something they said would happen on the weekends. Tell us about that. Yeah, the when we were there during the meeting, the um, new case, case manager um, is talking about some weekend programs that they want to have participate with the kids, so that the kids are not stuck in the facility doing whatever they're doing, sitting on their phone watching TV, doing something that's not as constructive or positive is what they could be doing with, uh, say, a role model or another adult, um, <clears throat> taking them and doing activities outside outside the church and the community. And also one thing that they brought up was um, have the, we want to have uh, eventually the kids be able to, um, yes, they're receiving service from us, but we want to have them be able to give service to other people and other kids that are also in need. And so that they can see that they are not only the ones that are in need, that they can also provide help to others. It's a, te and, it's a teaching process, and we're very, very happy that that's part of it. Yeah, and I, uh, I myself am really excited. I'm getting, I'm getting in contact with the, uh, the case manager and going to see if we can um, coordinate schedules and see, make some activities. And if, you, if anyone has any activities or... Um, things that they want, have ideas or want to volunteer their time on the weekends, feel free to get in touch with me and it's, it's, it's all love, it's all positive. Okay, so this is a millennial speaking and it really gets him going that he can help like this. How many of you are old enough to know the phrase branch Sabbath school? Really old, really old, really old Adventists, okay. And I'm not saying that if you don't know that you're, you're okay, the idea was that we could take what we do in Sabbath school and do it on a Sabbath afternoon in another place. Amen. Hence, branch and Sabbath school. So that was something that happened in my childhood. And I was, you know, the, the churches that were doing a branch Sabbath school were the cool churches. Mm -hmm. Then came along the church growth movement and all sorts of other things. And, and we now know that there are many ways in which we can spread the love of Jesus. 
when I heard this program from uh, Family Promise, I, I le leaned over with Naomi and said, can you say branch Sabbath school? Okay, we have a facility once again that could be filled on a Sabbath afternoon with families and children enjoying a good time in our facility and knowing that Jesus loves them and that, you know, pizza says, I love you too. So, you know, this, this is the sort of thing that if you're interested as, you know, Trevor gets more connected with that program as it gets going, just let him know, hey, I'll come on a Sabbath afternoon. I'll give up my Sabbath's nap once, once in a while and I'll come help play with the kids and help them to know that Jesus loves them. I think it's a, a grand opportunity once again to use our facility to the glory of God. Thank you so much. We're going to let the scripture be read now, and Jordan and I will just wait up here. Our scripture reading this morning is found in Matthew 13, 1 to 13. It says, That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him and that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood in the shore. Then he told them into many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow in his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell among the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, where grow up and choke the plants. Still the other seed fell on the good soil where he produced it a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak the people in parables? He replied, Because the knowledge of the secrets of kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have no abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Thou seeing, they do not see. Thou hearing, they do not hear or understand. Amen. Amen. Thank you and welcome to church today. We are already well underway as you can feel and you know that, that we have the opportunity to praise God through song. I hope that you enjoyed uh, that, the rendition of some of the older songs that we sang this morning because uh, they, they do come from my childhood and you just know uh, that song, I Surrender All, uh, us usually after that, what's the pastor going to do? Altar call. See, you guys are programmed. Uh, it, it's very interesting. So, so I am. I'm just going to start out by saying, how many of you this morning would like, you know, sight unseen, you haven't heard a thing about what Jordan and I are going to say, but you have already felt the Holy Spirit calling in your life today and you want to recommit your life. You just want to raise your hand right now. You just want to say, Jesus, I love you and I want to be in your kingdom. Amen. Amen. If you, you know, came to church hoping that you would get a chance to tell Jesus that, you can check that box and you can say, uh, I have made a commitment again to Jesus. Now, I want you to know that uh, this week, uh, all of us have at one time or another decided to break that commitment. Uh, the amazing grace of Jesus Christ says, I still love you. I want you to be a part of my kingdom. I, in fact, will continue to use you in my kingdom. That is so stunning to me whenever I think about it that, that I just want to sing that song. I, I surrender all. Uh, you're going to take what I am and you're going to use it? Really? Really? That's what you're going to do? Oh, wow. That's, I, I don't know how you're going to do that, but uh, I, I just give you who I am. So I want to thank you for uh, taking this moment to recommit your life. It's something that we need to do uh, both privately and publicly uh, as, we, as we go through life. Uh, us being at that meeting today with other concerned, uh, shall we say, Christian brothers and sisters 
uh, this morning was another way to publicly demonstrate our solidarity with doing the work that God has asked his followers to do. So I want you to know on your behalf that we represented you because we will go into this week now and we will have family promise people with us. So just know that uh, the Bible says all things work together for good to those who are called according to the purpose. And the purpose that he has called us is, is to be his hands and feet in the world. So coming together on a Sabbath morning like this, we, we do several things. We, we, we praise God, we, we thank him, we make a commitment to him, and then we also hear from him. And uh, Jordan and I have, have uh, I don't know if you knew this was going to happen, but it's, a, it's kind of a surprise thing to those who don't know and those of you who knew that we were going to do this. You'll know that for the next four weeks, including today, uh, Jordan and I are going to be up here and we're going to be talking about uh, a parable of the kingdom. Jesus, in the midst of his uh, work, has a whole host of parables that he speaks in. And he does so, you just heard the, the reading, and I want to embed this word into your head this morning. He does so because he is revealing the secrets of the kingdom. So you know that, that old song, Do you want to know a secret? Okay, do you want to know a secret? Do you want to know the secrets of the kingdom? Well, Jesus says, I'm going to tell you the secrets of the kingdom, but I'm going to tell them to you in code. All right, I'm going to tell stories that are going to be understandable on multiple levels. And you're going to study these stories, you're going to think about these stories, and they are going to continue to bless you the deeper and deeper you go into them, because, as you will see in a moment, different people are going to understand those stories or hear those stories from Jesus in different ways. And when we talk to each other about what it is that God is saying to us through these parables, we con when we conversate about them, which, by the way, just a little ad for Sabbath school, okay? We have a chance here for adults and children to have a chance to talk about things on a Sabbath morning. If you have no other time in the week, get up a little earlier on Sabbath and come to Sabbath school because then you'll have this interactive time where, as the Bible says, iron will sharpen iron, and we can get around the Word of God and we can dig deeper into it. That's, the, that's what Sabbath school is for. So if you feel a need for that in your life and you can't come on a Wednesday, you can't come on a Thursday, please come on Sabbath morning. It's, it's here for you. There's a class in the back that's studying the book of Revelation. There's a class in the back of the sanctuary here for adults that's studying uh, about stewardship right now. It's the the quarter that is being prepared in the quarterly. We have a book that has lessons in it uh, that comes every quarter, and right now we're studying the topic of stewardship. How do we take care of what God has given us? So just a little add in the midst of this prologue for that. Okay, so now, uh, without further ado, uh, Jordan, how are you? I'm doing all right, and I apologize if I sound a little bit like a goblin. I'm getting over the flu, so what? I, I promise this is not my regular strong speaking voice. I'll be much more impressed next week. And much we more, much more. Uh, lemon, <laughs> lemon juice. What else? Uh, yeah. What else can you can you get for? We're we're down with the homeopathy here. So down to the homeopathy. Uh, Absolutely. Um, Jordan is a Thornburg, okay, and I say that lovingly, kindly, and with a lot of passion because. This family has blessed this congregation for years. And uh, I'm really thankful that Jordan went to Pacific Union College. Mom, thank you so much. Dad, thank you so much. You probably paid for some of that. Um, <laughs> um, and, and he took a degree in communication. Okay? Um, so if you, if you notice that he has that ability, it's something he was born with and then sharpened up in his educational experience. I enjoy this very, very much, and so that's why I've asked Jordan. Jordan, we, we've chosen four parables, or sets of parables, mm -hmm. uh, from the middle of the Gospel of Matthew. So if you want to turn in your Bibles to the middle of the Gospel, I have them 
right here, and I would invite you to turn to Matthew chapter 13, if you would like, and you can then have the scriptures in front of you while we conversate about them. Um, Jordan, we, as, as the scripture was being read again this morning, thank you very much. Um, my mind was going immediately to soils, okay? How many of you have heard the parable of the sower and then the preacher talks about, well, which soil are you? Okay, guess what? That, that's not how it struck you. So where, no. do we, where do we go first with this? Well, uh, this all, I think we figured this out pretty early on in the lunches that we had planning up for this. Um, but for me, I always thought it was um, nat more natural in my mind to look at us all as the seed rather than the soil. And the soil, you know, a lot of the story is dedicated to that. And I think it gets people to look at what kind of soil they are. Um, and that leads to some of the kind of ugly things that we had talked about where it's a comparison to, oh, I'm the good soil, and this is clearly the rocky path, and I don't need to associate with them. <laughs> um, so Ouch. there's, there's Ouch. a little bit of grading that happens when you look at it from the soil standpoint. But Did you me, say judgment? Is that what you said? I Just, did. You did? Oh, he yeah. said grading, but he really meant to say judgment. Okay. Which, which I know we've gone on about at length. <laughs> but, um, but for me to look at it as we're all seeds is sort of an equalizer in that we are all designed for a purpose, and we are all designed to grow and to not be concerned over much with how the other seed's growing because we've got our own work to do. Um, okay, so wait, 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 wait. Um, I'm, I'm not liking where this story is going because what happens to the seed? It gets scattered everywhere. Intentionally, we... Uh, do I get to choose? No. There's no control over where you're placed. <laughs> Had you ever thought about that? That's... That's an interesting thought. Uh, how many of you like it when somebody says to you, uh, grow where you're planted? <laughs> don't you just want to slap them? <laughs> Sorry, we, we don't want you to hit us, but that's about what we just said. And there's a lot of, what we talked about, home, uh, Hobby Lobby? Yes. Has like all the signs there that are perfect <laughs> for that. Oh, you know, grow where you're planted. Nice cursive. Yes, right. But, um, but really, it was more meaningful for me to, to view it from that light because it fosters a couple different uh, feelings for me. One is that uh, there's kind of an inclusivity thing mm -hmm. where if you're a seed and you're a seed and everybody's a seed, we're all here to try and, and produce fruit or, or to grow. Um, is that the, you're, you're saying that's the goal of a seed is to die and reproduce? Yeah. Uh, had you ever heard that in a sermon on the sower? See, this is why I'm saying it's really good to talk to you today, Jordan. Keep going. <laughs> well, he's he's undermining how little he's done to like hone this in. So, he's, um, but no, it was your it was your idea to sort of look at the seed's job as as being there to die, um, and that sort of removes the ego from it. If you're looking at as your kingdom of heaven experience as being a seed and being called to produce fruits. Um, grace was the one that we had mm -hmm. talked about heavily for this week. Correct. Um, and to diminish yourself and to let it be focused on you know, the end result and the people around you, um, that's more productive for me than trying to check off a box that says, am I good soil today or am I you know, not? Um, and that was sort of our, our nugget for this week. We, we did four different sort of message points because I'm not that bright, and I need to have like one central theme to hang it on. So the, so for today, you know, our our little nugget was the kingdom of heaven is inclusive, and that's what I get when I read this parable, um, because the sower is going to distribute all the seed, and he. So you're saying he's in charge? Yeah. Which okay, I, so there's this other sign that I'm seeing in my mind right now. Let go and let go. <laughs> How many of you like that one, too? Uh, because that's essentially what we're saying here. If the sower is God, he is in control. And how many of us really let him take full control 
of our lives and place us where he wanted us to be this week. Well, that, this, then that leads us to kind of an uncomfortable place that, that you had mentioned where the sower does put the seeds in places that are not. You'd think that if it was a guy who really knew what he was doing, he'd put it all in the good soil and it would mm -hmm. all be a good crop. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there that's that's one quarter of the of the end result. Right. And sometimes you are called to be present in a place that might not be, you know, the most natural fit for you. Um, yeah, it's not a it's not a happy picture to be thought of as the seed that got placed on the soil uh, on the on the pathway because you don't sink in, you don't mix with that soil because it's being trodden down, and you become easy prey to the birds who are going to pick you off. Um, but it, it speaks to me of the intentionality of the sower to put seed there anyway. He's out in his field, and sure, he, he's plowed up his field, and most of the seed he is hoping will go into that place where it, it, it has been plowed, but he is also willing to, to throw seed near the edges. I think that's very important for us to, to grab a hold of today because I think that shows the grace of God that he is willing to send some of us. We are going to go to difficult places and we're going to be in places where our mission may not be as easily accomplished because it's just not going to, we're not going to be able to put roots down. We're not, we're not, we may. The, the, what is the rocky soil? The rocky soil is thin. So we put roots down. We try to do what we're, what we're intended to do. And the sun comes, the situation develops, and because we don't have the ability to, to keep on going, we, we wither and die, or maybe our ministry, our ministry there withers and dies. Again, just very different perspective. I have, uh, that's why it's such a fun thing to talk to Jordan about this today. Well, and um, we, we'd also talked, and this is helpful for me, um, but it seems like a lot of these parables are not meant to be the kind of thing where you categorize yourself once and that's where you stay for the rest of your life. Um, you know, there are some days where you do wind up getting closer to what's right than what's wrong and you're, you know, where you need to be and Jesus is talking, yes, you're the good soil. But some days you might be missing the mark, you might be not where you need to be. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that there has to be permanence about it. I think that you uh, can sort of look at it as an opportunity to do a little better the next day if you're not where you wanted to be that day. And you can do it without judgment and without, uh, you know, beating yourself up too much, but just sort of a, a process. Um, hmm. You actually have grace in your life for yourself. I try. <laughs> I think it's, it's easier to extend uh, grace for, for other people, but... Mm -hmm. um, so how many, how many of you have the same problem that Jordan does? You find it hard to forgive yourself. Okay? Uh, I, I think that's a huge point here that, that comes from your perspective. That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. You forgive yourself in your relationship with Jesus. Um, I like to say this to people who want to be rebaptized. So if you're thinking about being rebaptized, uh, this will be one of the things that I ask you. Um, have you ever divorced Jesus? Did you ever throw him out? Nine times out of ten, the person says, Oh, no. No, I, I, I never kicked him out of my life. So then I ask him, I ask the person, Well, why do you want to be remarried? Rebaptized? Maybe what you need is a recommitment moment where you promise that you are going to be following and or married back together. This, this concept is perfect to illustrate that, don't you think? That as we go through life, one day might be rocky soil, the next day might be a pathway soil, and your attempt to be close to Jesus just gets snatched away by the birds. Whoever those nasty events are in your life, they snatch that away. It's a, again, it's brilliant. Uh, he's trying to diminish his own brilliance, and that is not true. Um, okay, so when we talked about this, we, we said, what does it mean to be, if it means this to be a seed, then then how, 
maybe we could transition now to the next piece, which would be the weeds. Mm -hmm. Weeds begin with seeds as well. Yeah, and we had determined that weeds are simply plants that are in the wrong place. Um, they might have a purpose if they were 10 feet away from where they wound up. They might have a purpose if they so, were... So I'm a weed if I'm a barley and I'm in a wheat field. Correct. I'm not where I should... Okay. Uh, we, we decided that weeds are okay to stay. Well, that's scripturally based. Um, that's right. I don't have the one right there in front of me, but the gist of it is that let let everything grow together. It'll be sorted out by God in the end. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that, that takes a weight off my shoulder of having to be concerned about classifying other people and trying to decide whether they're productive or if they're a weed. Um, and I think that the, the command to grow together is powerful as well because it means that you're supposed to share the experience of the kingdom with everyone that you're with mm -hmm. and to not try and take God's job of, of um, categorizing people and and to just love and to, to be together and to be present with. So put together for us the these two concepts now where one you've said, uh, which to me is mind-blowing, that one day we might be uh, a seed in the good soil and the next day we might be seed in the rocky soil. Um, now you're saying I might be growing next to a, a seed that doesn't look like me or isn't like me but is in the good soil together with me and we're growing up under the grace of God. Um, how, how, how does that how does that work? I mean, is it, is it, uh, what, what if, what if I don't like that seed? <laughs> Tough. <laughs> you know, that seed is different from me. Okay. So what, what happened? What, what does he say about that? I mean, is he okay with that? Well, I think that you have, there are different ways to love people. And for some people I know the best way I know how to love them is to stay away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and for both of our mental health sake, just stay away. Um, but you can come at it from a place of love and respect for differences. Um, and and there are obviously some places where it falls apart. You know, if, if you've got an extreme situation in the church where somebody's just really bent on causing trouble. But I think for the most part, um, I go back to me being a relatively simple machine. I don't want to be worried about trying to figure out... Um, how other people are performing. And if I can come every week or if I can meet wherever I'm called to meet with people and say, you know, for all our differences, we respect a common God, we respect a common kingdom experience. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you, if you believe that what you are today might not be what you are tomorrow, mm -hmm. you might be indirectly or directly responsible for helping the person who may be a weed today become the right kind of plant for tomorrow or later on down the road. So recently, and I'm going to call upon Jordan's dad, we came up with a saying that we want to associate with our church. And we used the word transformational. Okay. I would say that now this discussion that we're having it includes transformation as a possibility and maybe the reason why Jesus says, hey, no judgment, and two, don't even think about uprooting because I have, I maybe have, I, I, the sower, maybe have placed, now it does say that the evil one sowed the, the weeds and did so on, on purpose to confuse and to cause chaos. I know that that's part of the story. However, the sower and also the one who's in charge of the harvest says, it's not your job to separate and to uproot. I bet there are people sitting in the hearing of my voice right now who know, who know what it's like to have been told that they are not welcome. And then there are others of you who know what it's like 
to have had that person growing up next to you. And when they got uprooted, when they were told that they were not welcome, it hurt you too. Some of your roots got broken. Some of your growing process was disturbed. I don't know, Jordan. I, I think that God's got a point here to make about us not being judgmental, about us being full of grace, uh, about us saying, you're different to me, but you're a human being, and God wants to grow you, and he wants you to be part of his kingdom, not only now, but for forever. Mm -hmm. And so you can see how ugly it might be for you to have thoughts in your mind that you don't want to be growing next to that person when that person may have come into your life because the sower planted them there. Well, and I've seen that from a slightly different angle because a lot of my uh, peer group that I've grown up with, you know, I had the benefit of going to Adventist education, education since fourth grade. See how well it worked for me. Um, <laughs> So from fourth grade on to my bachelor's degree. And so I grew up with a lot of people who we were all, at the start, very similarly entrenched in Adventism. Um, there was a pretty big attrition rate growing up, where a lot of the people I'm friends with, you know, for one reason or another, um, put distance between them and the church. And a lot of what I heard them articulate is that they don't like uh, feeling like they're being made to feel like they don't belong. Um, I am lucky in that I haven't had that experience. Um, this is a great place to call home and and uh, grateful for it, but it, it does hurt when you see people that you care about mm -hmm. uprooted and moved when you think that they could serve a huge purpose. Mm -hmm. um, or just that you want to be selfish and commune with them, you know? I'm a parent. I have a grown child now and one that's almost grown and uh, I'm sorry to tell you that they they know the churches that are open to them your generation and those that are not and it's how they are treated on Sabbath morning it's how they whether or not they are, are, are called upon to be a part of the family part of whatever's going on that's why I was really glad that Trevor came today to Family Promise because this is what's going on in our church and we want everybody to feel a part of that as we do mission in Santa Clarita. Um, I don't know, maybe my daughter's watching me this morning uh, from Calgary, Alberta. Hey, darling. Okay. And that there are others in our congregation who watch us on Sabbath who don't have the ability to be here with us. We want to include, we want to make them feel welcome. And also, when we do go out, like Trevor was saying, when we do go out to do the work of God, who says that we should not involve those individuals that we are in the process of helping? If we don't, then I think we are exhibiting that attitude that says, you're not like me, so I don't know that I should include you in my life. So this is why I'm saying this is... This, this word is, this has been speaking to me a huge amount. Just want you to know that this idea of inclusivity that comes straight out of this parable that I never knew was in there, and the idea that, that uh, the, the grace of God, that I can, I can actually apply that grace to myself, I can forgive myself, and then I can also do so by forgiving others when they do not have grace in their life for me. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's just amazing. So as we go forward, um, I'm thinking we may want to, first of all, look at each other differently. Um, second of all, as we, uh, as we look at maybe some of the differences that have separated us in the past, we may want to start saying, oh no, those aren't differences anymore because that person is a seed just like I'm a seed. And so then, it, to me, it, what's the purpose of the church? Is the purpose of the church to say to Jordan's generation, sorry, we don't need you because you're not like us. Okay? The pain, I want you to know, the pain that I feel when I see 
anything like that going on in our congregation or in any other Adventist church for that matter. The pain is something that then triggers the next emotion, and, and, and I'm just being real with you guys, it's anger. Okay? That anyone would have the audacity to hurt one of these little ones. Jesus says, a millstone is better for you. Okay? So, th that's, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's me gone to preaching, and I'm going to be quiet now and just say, <laughs> Jordan, uh, we, we've seen that this idea about seeds changes our perspective. And, and we, we, we said to ourselves, we're going to look at perspective change. We're also going to look at how that changes, changes our attitude. So, um, what for you would, would change if, if you had to see a church that, uh, saw people all as seeds? What, what would that look like for you? Well, I think it's one that's committed to growth for all. Um, and finding ways to engage and finding ways to connect people with whatever they need to be fruitful. Um, it's hard. I, I wouldn't want anybody to walk away from here, you know, with all the smoke you've been blown <laughs> my way. I, I wouldn't want anybody to think that I have it figured out. This is something that I have to do day by day and work on, you know, finding the grace for people who are different than me. Because some of you guys, you know, you put olives on your haystacks and that's like unpardonable for me. <laughs> um, but, you know, you really have to work with your own hangups every day when you get up. And, and so I think that if you were to say there is a church where everybody is seen as seeds, it's one that's gracious, it's one that's understanding, it's one that's... Um, that takes ownership of the kind of kingdom experience that they intentionally create, um, and and that's more or less what I would say. Okay, um, I'm just going forward here from from this one to the to the the, the weeds. Mm -hmm. um, just to remind us again, this is now in the middle of chapter 13 in Matthew. But while everyone was sleeping, an enemy came and sowed weeds in the wheat and went away. And I think this is why we have always thought that the weeds were bad and the seeds were good. But let's not forget that they all grew together. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir! So this happened at board meeting, by the way. Just, just kidding. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, uh, did you, didn't you sow good seed in, the, in your field? When did the weeds come? Where did the weeds come from? Okay. So I want you to know that, that moving from, moving from that to this new understanding that yes, yes, there may be some who are motivated, are, have a different DNA. But I want you to know that, that, that in our discussion, Jordan brought the grace of God back into focus for me. Okay. He really did. And that means I can be transformed. I can be a weed, and I can be changed into being a different kind of seed. I can literally have the, my DNA, my spiritual DNA, connection to God can be changed, and I don't have to self-identify anymore as a weed. And, and could that be because God allowed me to continue growing right next to the other seeds? So, uh, I don't know, he's looking forward to a harvest, right? And he basically says here, don't separate everything until the harvest comes. Uh, maybe that's because he's waiting for weeds to become seeds. And he's wanting us to watch the transformational process, knowing that we don't have anything to do with that, that it is simply the power of God. I know that some of you have family members you pray for every day. Maybe you look at them as weeds. Maybe this week, though, you can say, God, I know that you have that person in my life because, because they're growing right next to me and I have the opportunity to show them your grace this week. And by showing them your grace, they will be transformed and will no longer be a weed but be a seed. Um, we talked about John 3.16.
and, and it kind of resolves it for us. Um, it's everybody. It's very inclusive. For God so loved the world, the whole world, and he gave. And then he asks us to be a seed that he plants and that we then give. We give everything. Seed does not stay a seed. It produces other seeds, some of which will be pounded. You know that this is what happens with wheat, right? It doesn't stay in the seed form. It gets ground up into flour and then used to make bread. So if you thought that you could just stay the same and be part of the kingdom of God, uh, the news for you this morning is the grace of God is going to transform you and it's going to allow you to be a part of the growth process or the feeding process. That comes out of this parable and uh, I want to thank Jordan for really helping to point that out because if there's anything that the millennial generation needs right now, they need to know that they're loved, they need to know that they're wanted, they need to know that they are uh, needed. Needed. Okay? Uh, there's a whole chunk of our congregation right now who are enjoying children's church. Pray for them. Pray for them. There are numbers of those families for, for which children's church is their spiritual food on a monthly basis. But I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. There are two Sabbaths a month when we don't have children's church. And I'm going to ask the uncles and aunties, the grandmas and grandpas of this congregation, to ask God who they can grow with. Do me a favor. This week, find someone to invite to church next week. And I mean someone who's going to sit beside you. Okay? They're not in church today, so I can tell a story. I'm not going to give you their names. But their kids were being noisy. And one of our sisters turned around and said, you know, we have Sabbath bags. And we do, by the way. Not only do we have uh, coloring pencils for you in the pews now, uh, and, and by the way, we are so proud that they're being used and, and that you're enjoying them. Uh, Joe and Kit uh, prepare that for you every Sabbath, and that's a wonderful thing to keep your mind occupied for those who need to scribble and, and or draw beautiful pictures, because we're seeing evidence of that you leave it behind and, and we see that you're using the paper. That's really good. And so do the people who come here on Sunday. So this is awesome. It's, it's a way of keeping you into what we're doing, and that's what we hoped would happen. But what I'm also hoping is that you will grab a hold of someone, maybe who's younger than you, maybe who has a family with squirrely children. Okay, grandmas, grandpas, you with me on this? And just say, I would like to sit with you in church next week. Now, it may be that they'll have to leave early or that their kids will go to sleep or their kids will cry. And, and you know what? That sound is like music to my ears. Because it says, we have people who care. We have people who care in this church. And if nothing else, today's rendition of the sower and then also the weeds, I'm hoping that's what you take away. That we're all in this together. We're all seeds. We're all able to experience the grace of God and also then be placed in a situation where we can become part of what God is doing in the world to spread his love and spread his grace. Amen? Amen? Thank you very much. Remember that many of you raised your hand today, and I, I just want you to know that heaven, heaven saw your recommitment, and God will come to you this week, and he will show you what he wants you to do. Uh, be assured that that will happen. Be listening for his still small voice, Take a moment before your, hit, uh, your feet hit the floor in the morning. Your eyes fly open. Don't just jump out of bed. Just say, God, I'm about to get out of bed. 
What do you want me to do today? If you just do that one thing, I guarantee you this week will be different from last week. All right? It, it, I don't know how, because I'm not God. I'm not going to be the one telling you, but it's going to be different if you ask God what he would like you to do. God bless you this week. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning can be the prayer that we take from this place today and carry through the rest of the week. Stand with me as we sing, Take My Life and Let It Be. upon us as we leave this place, knowing that your Holy Spirit will accompany us during this week. Lord, for safety, for blessings, we pray, but we also pray for those that we will meet, that we will have the right words to speak that you have promised to give us. We ask these things not because we are worthy, but because your grace has made us your children, and we are so thankful to be your children today. Bless us and keep us, we pray. Amen and amen.